While this video is not scary, what is scary is trans voice misconceptions. So let's cover them today. Because between you and me, I was supposed to upload a full voice tutorial this month, but it's been a little delayed. Let's start with some more well-known misconceptions and get progressively more obscure. Like a trans misconception iceberg or something. Club Penguin, why? <laughs> So there's a common misconception that you have probably heard of, that in order to sound like a girl, you need high pitch. This is a myth. If you go too high up into the stratosphere, you end up sounding like Mickey Mouse, or at least a bad impression of the mouse. So while pitch does help with how the voice is gendered, my voice, for example, isn't actually that high when you think about it. I used to talk a lot higher around here, but I speak a lot lower now for a few important reasons that I'll share with you, lovely audience. If you speak too high up, it's unlikely you'll be able to sustain this pitch. This can lead to not being able to talk as long or loud, for that matter. If you tried to sing along at a Taylor Swift concert, you'd be a goner. You may be wondering, random voice coach YouTuber with a cool Patreon in the description, what do I do instead of pitch then? Well, here's the name of a couple of techniques you can look up and find all sorts of tutorials, whether it's from me or the other wonderful people that make tutorials. Pitch is still important, but no need to worry about it that much. Honestly, most students I've had have just organically raised their pitch while we're focusing on the other stuff. There's a common misconception that we need to practice trans voice for hours upon hours at a time. That's ridiculous. I promise you, it's actually the opposite. The reasons are not related to proposed decreasing attention spans or something. Instead, it's due to an important aspect of learning trans voice that's often overlooked. Creating habit. If you practice for this two minutes every hour in the day, that's pretty ideal actually. That's like really good. Every other hour if that doesn't work. But honestly, if you just do a few two minute sessions of the techniques you can learn online, each day, whenever convenient, your voice will improve much more than if you stared at a wall and just said phrases over and over for hours straight. Another misconception is related to the larynx. This misconception is that the larynx has to move up a lot. This advice is mostly applicable, of course, to people who have tried a larynx tutorial, whether that's mine or many of the other wonderful options available these days. So while I recommend my old larynx tutorial I made that a year ago, and to be completely honest, perhaps transparent, <laughs> there's some parts I partially disagree with now, as I've grown and learnt as an instructor of trans voice. Most notably, there's a part of the video where I instruct the viewer to hold a swallow motion. Please don't do that. <laughs> Please, I can't edit the video in post. Throats are pretty delicate. <laughs> Doing it a few times inherently isn't dangerous, but if you did it over and over and over again, not ideal. We have to be nice to our throats. I mean, there's an entire specialization for speech pathologists to focus on swallowing and swallowing alone, so it's pretty important. So I intend to fully remake my larynx video, but for now, here's a quick tip. <laughs> so long story short, this little ball in the throat moves up or down depending on which way the larynx is moving. Making a whispered sound keeps it level or decreases, doesn't make a difference that I know of. And if you make a sound, for whatever reason, the ball goes up. Long story short, this ball is connected to the larynx, but it isn't the larynx, but it's connected to the larynx. When it goes up a little, so does our larynx. They work together, essentially. Doing this makes our voice less gravelly, so we can avoid that kind of blah sound if the voice changes. However, your ball doesn't have to go all the way up, like those carnival games. So the ball of the throat does not have to skyrocket all the way up the throat like one of those hammer games at carnivals. Doing this is dangerous. Reason being, when you swallow, you'll notice that the ball of the throat will go fully to its highest point. This is to ensure no food you swallow goes somewhere it shouldn't. <laughs> it's a body mechanism designed to protect you. <laughs> but when talking, you shouldn't raise your larynx that high otherwise you kind of have a lack of access to breathing <laughs> if you can't breathe 
You'll sound very out of breath no matter how good your voice gets. It'll lack support, and most importantly, holding the larynx will really hurt. <laughs> so instead, you just need that ball to just raise a smidge. Just a little bit. If you gently, and I mean gently by the way, don't, don't be rough with your body, your body's a delicate thing. If you were to gently touch the little ball in the throat and raise your larynx with the technique covered in either my tutorial or another tutorial, you should feel the ball move up a little bit, but your finger should still have been touching the ball. It doesn't move that far up, you know? So I'll make an in-depth larynx tutorial revised soon. I'm currently busy with the next video, which is a bubble phonation video. It's okay if you don't know what that is, I'll cover it. That's the point of a tutorial, as you know. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna work hard with that video. However, that one's taking a really long time. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. All right, all right, last misconception. I'm too old to get a girl voice, or even I'm too young to get a girl voice. I've, I've been asked both. I've been told both, and like, not really. That's not really how it works. The kind of ways our voice changes as we get older aren't that different between assigned sexes at birth. However, a voice post-puberty will have thickened vocal folds. But if you learn to raise your larynx and other techniques, you can achieve any sound a cis woman can make. No matter when you start, just keep in mind, voice training takes time. It may be harder than you anticipated, and the time commitment required is inherently kind of frustrating. <laughs> but don't give up, okay? Just because something doesn't happen straight away doesn't mean it's impossible. I mean, if you learn a language, you're not going to speak the language straight away. You got to build up with building blocks. Trans voice is the same. We get better and better and better and better. I didn't sound perfect when I started. My voice is closer to this and people said I was a lost cause. So, just letting you know, you can just, you can do it. <laughs> you don't have to be some like, ooh, ooh, professional singer to become someone that can do a girl voice. I, um, I learned singing very recently, actually. It's a very different skill. I'm not very good at it yet. Very different skill. <laughs> well, I hope you lovely audience enjoyed this trans voice misconceptions video. I offer private and group lessons on Patreon, which the group lessons are done within the game VR chat. However, you can join with just a computer or a phone. No VR device is actually necessary, but you can if you want to wave your arms while you learn. <laughs> I just do it this way so the spatial audio it's just easier for my ears that's the only reason I do it that way private lessons however are done via discord video chat which I find most people find preferable thank you everyone for your patience I know the voice videos have been taking longer and longer to release that's due to the increased scope crazy effects posted and all that kind of thing so thank you for your patience and I will work rigorously to bring that bubble phonation tutorial to your lovely screens. <laughs> Happy Halloween, stay hydrated, and know that you are valid.